In this video, we provide the solution to question number 15 for practice exam 2 for Math 1050. We're given a quadratic function, f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 2. We have to first convert it into vertex form. Once we have it in vertex form, we're then going to graph it over here. Make sure that we label the vertex, the, the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts of the graph. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, like so. All right. So the first thing we've got to do is convert into vertex form. We can complete the square. Uh, there were some other methods we talked about, but that's just how we're going to do it right here. So to put it in vertex form, we're going to separate the x's from the constant. So we end up with this 3x squared plus 2x minus 2. You notice a gap here. So I'm, I'm waiting for that guest of honor to arrive. We're going to factor out the 3. So we end up with 3 times x squared plus 2 thirds x and then minus 2 like so. So then we have to take half of the 2 thirds right here, uh, which is going to be a 1 -third. And then we have to square that thing that gives us a 1 9th. And so then the guest of honor is going to be plus 1 9th. But if we add the 1 9th, we have to also steal away the 1 9th so that things are balanced. So we're going to subtract 3 times 1 9th right here. Where did the 3 come from? Well, that's because this 3 distributes in all the pieces. So we really are subtracting 3 times 1 9th right there. So now because we've completed the square, the inside expression right here then factors as a perfect square. So we get f of x equals 3 times x plus 1 third squared. Where did this come from? We take a square root of third, of 1 ninth, which is a third, excuse me. And then the sign here will be identical there as well. Then um, we have, so 3 goes into, of course, 1 ninth. That's going to give you right here, this is negative 1 third. So I'm going to rewrite this negative 2 is in fact as a negative six uh, thirds. So we combine them together. So we end up with a negative seven thirds like so. So this is now the vertex form of the quadratic equation. So we should make some indication that we've discovered that. All right. Once it's in vertex form, we can start recognizing transformations very quickly. We can also find the vertex itself. Uh, so let's make mention of that. The vertex h comma k, this is going to equal this number right here. You have to switch the sign though. So we end up with a negative one third. And then we then get negative 7 thirds over here, uh, like so. And so as you graph this thing, um, you could make the scale honestly be basically really whatever you want. Uh, if you want this to be 1, 2, 3, 4, that's fine. If you want this to be like 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, you can make that label no big deal. I'm going to keep it just on the scale of 1 and 2 and 3, like so. So then the vertex... I'm going to graph that first. Negative one third would be about right here. Um, negative seven thirds, that's two and a third. Negative two and a third. So it's going to be about right here. So the vertex, I'm going to graph it. I would put it right here. And it's best to label this thing. So negative one third and then negative seven thirds, like so. Great. Uh, so we have the vertex there. We want the y-intercept. The y-intercept we can actually find from the original function. If you plug in x equals zero, you're going to get negative two as your y-intercept. So that's actually really close to negative 7 thirds. So draw it right here, right? So we're going to get 0 comma negative 2. And if we think of the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex of a parabola like so. Um, what that does is for reflection purposes, you could reflect this on the other side to get another point, which would be about right here. Those are really still close together. So that's going to make, if I just try to graph it from that, that would be very difficult. Um, we do have to list the x-intercepts. Um, I'll be explicit with the y-intercept. I didn't, I put it on the graph, but I didn't list it. We need to do that. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 2, like I mentioned. To find the x-intercepts, we have to set the equation equal to 0 and solve, for which actually the original format uh, is probably a little bit easier to use uh, to solve it. Um, notice my vertex has turned out to be this fraction. If you it, Factoring probably wasn't going to be super helpful. We could, I mean, we could just solve from here. That's also an option. We could use the quadratic formula. There's so many options you could do here. You could just plug in the quadratic formula. I think for this one, I'm just going to take it, since I already put it in the vertex form, let's just go from there. Like if you set this thing equal to zero, what's going to happen? So... I'll switch my color here to just illustrate what's going on. If we're trying to solve f of x equals 0, that turns out to mean 3 times x plus a third squared is equal to 7 thirds. Uh, divide both sides by 3. That's going to give us 7 over 9. We're going to take the square root of both sides, in which case we end up with x plus a third. 
is equal to, when we take the square root, we're gonna get plus or minus seven over three, and then we subtract the one third from both sides. Now we get our x-intercepts. Our x-intercepts, uh, these are gonna coincide with negative one plus or minus the square root of seven over three, for which you might need to approximate that one to help you out here. Again, using a calculator would be, would be grand, but if you didn't have one, notice that the square root of seven is almost the square root of nine, um, which means that thing's almost three. And so again, from an estimate point of view, it's kind of like negative one plus three over three. That is, you get two thirds. And then the other one's kind of like negative one minus three over three, um, which is gonna give us negative four over three. So roughly speaking, we're looking for negative four thirds and positive two thirds. That's not exactly the case. But again, if you, if you have a calculator, you should just estimate it yourself. But if you didn't have one, uh, you're not completely without any, any pursuit there. And so let's label these on the graph. So again, one was about two thirds right here, and we'll label it. This one right here would be negative one plus the square root of seven over three comma zero. And then by symmetry, we get the other one, but that would be about right here. In which case, this one was negative one minus the square root of seven over, over three comma zero. And then from at some point, we're probably ready to start drawing our parabola getting the correct concavity. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you should pass through your x-intercepts, your vertex, and uh, your y-intercept, and then we get the picture like so. So we've graphed our quadratic function by first putting it in vertex form, identifying the intercepts in, ver in the vertex, and then, yeah, and then graphing it.